G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in a previous video, I showed you how you could take one of these and add one of these or one of these to make lots of this. which you then melt down to make some of this. Which then saves you lots of this, which allows you to buy lots of this and you get to save the planet at the same time and feel good about it. I mean, look, you know, if we don't look after the hairy-nosed wombat and the backward hopping yellow spotted platypus, who the hell's gonna? I mean, yeah, I'm not just doing it for the beer. But along the way you learn quite a bit about aluminium or aluminium as the Americans like to call it. And I know they have a jolly good old laugh when we say aluminium and probably we fall off their chairs, you know, in hysterics. But it is the correct word, guys, I mean, you know, Aluminum, it sounds like something from a Superman comic, you know, kryptonite. Anyway, well, no, we won't go down that path. I know I'm going to get into trouble saying things like that. So, what do we got? Well, if we look at this aluminum here, for instance, this is some stuff which was melted down from the base plate of a, uh, a lawnmower, the, the cutting deck, and it's fairly, you have to say it's low grade. This is some stuff that came from... Uh, or it was a mixture, sort of, you know, if you look at the dregs, there's all sorts there, so that would have come out of, you know, who knows what. This stuff, on the, on the other hand, I know where this came from. This came from some of this, which is high quality DC motor end plates off of uh, treadmill motors. So, you know, that's excellent. Look at that. That's really good stuff. So what I got this stuff, which is the wheel ring, all sawn up, that you would have seen uh, earlier. And I melted it down into a test bar like this. You would have thought, well, you know, this is supposed to be pretty good stuff, that it would be a straightforward case of this is really, you know, the best aluminium you can use and that the properties of the wheel rim, which I'll show you, will transfer to the melted aluminium. And it's not quite that simple. Um, yeah, not quite that simple. So what's the interesting point about wheel rim aluminium versus other scrap aluminium? Well, anybody that had watched the video would have seen that this stuff is actually very, very tough, and unlike most aluminium, it's also flexible. It springs. I mean, that's not what you would get with normal aluminium. It would have snapped by now. This is damn tough stuff. So, I mean, Obviously it's made that way so that if a car wheel rim hits a, an immovable object at high speed it would have to be some pretty catastrophic crash to smash the rim. I mean this is mighty tough stuff. Well, what could be better for making stuff out of? Mighty tough stuff, I mean that's what we want. So uh, I thought this is great. But then I melted some down and here's an ingot I poured, a bit of a leftover, and I'll cut a strip of this off and then we'll show you what the aluminium does after you reheat it and melt it.
Okay, so here's exhibit A, a freshly cut piece of aluminium uh, ing ingot, which was the wheel rim material. This stuff. And as you saw earlier, this stuff is tough as old boots and quite springy. But we've now got the stuff that's been remelted. So now we'll try the same test with the remelted stuff. Okay, here we go. Whoa. So, it bent, but then it snapped. Whereas this other stuff um, is almost <laughs> almost unbreakable. It, it, it was springy. This is not springy. Um, this is bendy and then breaky. See, there's no spring. Oh, a little bit, but then, then she goes, she snaps. So, it's still good tough stuff, I've got to admit. It's very high quality. I mean, I cast that without any flux or um, degassing agent and I just melted it and, and reused it and it was perfect it was fantastic it's excellent stuff but it's interesting that obviously when they manufacture these rims they've got some sort of process they use to impart um, strength durability you know impact resistance I suppose you've got to say into the rims which once you heat it and melt it back again melt it down you lose that that characteristic. I don't know how they put it in there in the first place, but it's an interesting, very interesting um, attribute. And uh, if anybody knows what they do when they make wheel rims to put that, that factor in, that, that impact resistance. I mean, if I was to put that on across the, the vice and hit it with a hammer, it wouldn't shatter. And I don't think this would either, because it's still got that, um, it's still got that uh, flexibility in it which would stop it from shattering. Whereas this stuff, if I was to slice that and hit it with a hammer, I think it would probably fracture uh, because it's, it's, it's fairly coarse, uh, low copper content uh, aluminium, I think. So anyway, all very interesting. Um, I thought I'd pass this on to you, it's, um, yeah, it's all not straightforward with this stuff, obviously, the different grades have got different characteristics, um, and I mean the wheel rim material is certainly the way to go, and I notice even on the scrap prices they pay more at the yards for alloy wheel rims than they do for standard aluminium, so that, I suppose that must say something about it. All right. Well, as for me, that's it for, for now. I'm off to have one of these, which I got from all that money I, I saved by building my own aluminium. And, you know, yeah, as I said, it's not about the beer, guys. It's about the planet. So, yeah, get out there and, and save the heck out of it. Okay, see you next time. Cheers.